Hey, hey, good help is back again with me, Will Help, and some concepts to spin. And you'll see in yourself, if you're listening in, a finite road left. So let's start. Hello, you wonderful people who matter so very, very much. Welcome back. As you probably already know, you, you shouldn't watch episode two before you've watched episode one from the series. How do you watch the answer video first? I know, right? Explain that to me. And I told you in episode seven that you needed to have seen episode six first, right? Well, we really need to have seen all seven episodes at this point before you venture past it, because this is the point of no return. We are in the run up to the Finally, the breaking laugh. This is the big one, the one we've been building up to. My big reveal of my big discovery. The thing I was led in my life to understand so that I could turn around and help lead you guys to it too. At the time of writing this episode, I had just celebrated 10 years since the day of the big discovery, which I found, interestingly enough, um, of all places during a conversation on a lovely date, trying to impress a lovely woman. Now, I've debated about talking about my journey from there to here on the channel, but I really don't want to make the channel about me. It's about, you know, making sure that this gets passed into other people's understandings. You know, maybe after all this gets out there. So on that thought, I'll say it again, please, Plug this stuff in, see if it fits, see for yourself. I learned that from LeVar Burton. But you don't have to take my word for it. And if you do that and you find it to be true, if you find it to be something of worth, do what we do best with that. Share it with others. This channel doesn't really have, it doesn't have ads on uh, YouTube or Facebook. Uh, it's, it's all word of mouth and well, sharing the video with other people. And they tell two friends, and they tell their friends, and so on, and so on, and so on. Talk to people about the concepts and what your personal takeaway was. It's how I made about half of my discoveries regarding the breaking laugh and these other concepts. Speaking to someone else forces your brain to reorganize the information and approach it from an angle that you would not get to see otherwise. <laughs> Computer programmers have this thing called rubber ducky debugging. In programming, one single left out bracket in a line of code can cause the whole program to fail. So the programmer that's trying to figure out, uh, you know, where is this kind of problem occurring carries around with them a rubber ducky. The programmer then proceeds to explain to the rubber ducky every single line of code and what it's supposed to do. You know who I usually take my problems to to get the best advice from? Someone that knows very little about the topic. Because I have to explain everything about it to them. And in doing that, I typically find the answer while explaining the problem. That reorganization, whew, it's helpful. So I'm gonna make three promises here. The first promise is if you explain one or more of these concepts to someone else, you will gain a much deeper insight into the concepts. There's just something about these concepts. Explaining them to someone else tends to lead to making new personal discoveries. It's awesome, especially the breaking laugh. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be in that episode that I'll be putting together most of the topics that I've been talking about since episode one. The true nature of the breaking laugh is practically a structure that's made up of the other concepts, and I get to put them together for you finally! No way, that's awesome! How many pieces? 3,803. Insane. I know. If you watch from here without seeing the previous episodes, only very small parts of the big reveal are going to land and you really will have cheated yourself out of learning one of the big secrets behind why we are the way that we are. The second promise. If you try to implement what's in these videos, and I mean really try, not dipping a foot in the pool, but full out Mary Catherine Gallagher cannonballing into it, you will find happiness. 
real, substantial, nourishing happiness. The kind that sticks to your ribs, so to speak, you know? And my last promise is this. Even go halfway full out, you'll be satisfying and satiating that part of God inside of you. The, the soul, let's, let's call it a soul for a moment. There's definitely more reasons why we're calling it that, but we're not quite there yet. But I'm pretty sure that's where it is and you know, what people refer to as a soul anyways. So most of you should be good with that. Yeah, you? Okay. Raise it up or leave it down in a show of hands. Thank you. <laughs> hey, yeah, okay. Nice enthusiasm guy with shirt off. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna call it a soul, if that's all right. Your soul will be very happy with you. So, let's get through the last bit of setup here and we can finally let you in on the big secret. Quick recap, you're made of God, both of the commandments are the same commandment, and the golden rule is pretty universal. You can love God there by loving God here through all the other people and through that part of them which is made in God's image. Now I've come to believe that not only are you made up of God, but God gets to be you. I know, hear me out. Your experience of this world is wholly unique to you. Your viewpoint is yours and yours alone, and you are the one that navigates with your decisions where your portion of the story goes and who your character is. However, while I think your viewpoint is unique, I don't believe that you are experiencing your life alone. If you were made of God and not nothing, then it stands to reason that God experiences everything, because God literally is everything, which plays a big part of why he's probably impossible to prove. If he's literally every part of our entire frame of reference, and this all runs on his design, then there's no context because he'd literally be all context. There's, there's nothing that could be held up in contrast. If every day is a sunny day, yeah. Yeah. well then what's a sunny day? But for me, the idea of God experiencing everything is also such a massively mournful thought. To know that God existed in every part of every tragedy, every atrocity visited by man upon man, every single atom in both the victims and the perpetrators, that God was the energy of the knife being thrust. God experienced being the breath that left the victim's lungs and a scream. Every single family member that grieved so heavily for the sudden loss of their loved one. God knows what it is to be the little girl that continued to grow up, but from there on without her big brother. God experienced every single moment from every single angle, and it breaks my heart. But my respect for God has an entirely new dimension added to it. That which you have done unto the least of you, you have done unto me in ways you can't imagine. But hey, you know, that means he was also a part of every single aspect of every single kindness, every happy moment, and, and, and any goodness that has ever occurred. Every good feeling felt or given, God experienced as well, far more intimately than any one of us is capable of. God loves you far more deeply than you can conceive of. And he may be disappointed in or, or appalled at some of your choices, but he never stops loving you. Now, all of this that we've been talking about for the past uh, three episodes seem to point to the idea that the design of us and our world is focused on primarily two things. The first, that we are supposed to care about each other. We're supposed to love each other. Uh, it stands to logical reason that we're probably supposed to forgive each other. You know, we're supposed to help one another and we're supposed to reach out and be part of a community. No one gets to happiness alone. And the second thing that it seems apparent to me that we're supposed to do, we'll have to take care of that after the breaking laugh. It's a really good one though and it's worth your wait. Point is, we're designed to take care of each other, to have 
great compassion to work together. We're designed to love each other in, in a way that produces more of that genuine laugh, that aimless love. We're designed to live this way. You can feel it when you love, but most of us, let's just say that if living the way we're designed to was the default setting, we've definitely tweaked the preferences. But how can that be? You know, if we're designed to live a certain way, then how can we live outside that design? That's some homework for you. I want you to think on that. How would one go about living against their design? What would that be like? I appreciate you taking the time to watch all of these videos because you're about to need them. You see, my life was led down a series of paths very specifically put together just right so I could see this next reveal for what it was when I found it. The day that I told you that I wasn't going to be able to do the Breaking Laugh explanation episode that we had originally planned, I realized that in order for this to work, all of you would need to be able to see it from my point of view, uh, my vantage point, so that you could see it for what it truly is when I introduce you to it. Okay, so are you finally, finally ready? I think you are. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and my absolute honor, after 10 years of work, to introduce you to the Breaking Laugh. Next time on Could Help. <laughs> I hope I see you back for that one. It is a life changer. Until then, like it if you love it, leave it if you thought it, subscribe if you dare, and share if you care to see a little more of this out there. Goodbye, you wonderful people who matter so, so much. Concepts to spin, and you'll see in yourself if you're listening in, a finite road left. So let's start. Get going. Spin again. Can't use again again. Uh, no. So let's get through the rest of this a little bit and uh, quick recap. So, messing up my shirt, Mom. So let's get through the last little bit of setup and we can finally get you in on the big secret. And I don't think that was words. You can love God here by loving God there. And that's backwards. And you are the only one that gets to navigate the decisions of where your portion of the story goes and who your character is. Yes. Your experience in this world is wholly unique to you. Your experience in this world is wholly unique to you. you holy, why can't I say that phrase without something weird happening? <laughs>